Welcome to Nerd or Nerd with me, Jack Hempster. And me, Liam Underwood. And in this episode, we're going to be talking all about Berserk, Volume 1, a Japanese manga book. But before we get to that, it's time for my favourite segment, Catching Up with Jack and Liam. So how are you today, Jack? I'm good, Liam. How are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. What's what's new in the life of, of Jack? I'm buying a car. That's new. Yeah. Yeah, Come I've on bought, well, I've bought a car. All right, so what type of car is it? Vauxhall Corsa. I used to have one of those back in the old days. I've got a new one. Oh, so what's uh, fancy pantsy about this one? Uh, I went through, so I said, I, I've spoken to you uh, since I bought it. Yeah. And uh, sort of explained to you, so I'll, I'll tell the listeners, I don't know anything about cars. Right, here's the thing, right? When we were just having that little discussion there, I sort of made it sound like I didn't really know what you were up to. And now you're just sort of, like, lifting the veil behind the production that we put into this show. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. So anyway, I don't know anything about cars, but I do know stuff about technology. And by that I mean I know that when I see something that's cool and technological, I want it. Give me an example. So, for example, looking at cars, yeah. some of the cars had screens in them. Where, where's the screen? On the, you know, the f- centre console? The dashboard? Some to some people say centre console, or is Possibly. that what they say about starships? Yeah, I've I've never driven a starship, so I do not know. Fair enough. Yeah, the dashboard, like in okay. the middle where the radio is on some cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's got like so. Some of them had panels there, or like yeah. a screen. Is that so? Um, you can see behind. That has like a behind no, camera. No, helps with reversing. And it, stuff. I think if you've got a behind camera, that would go there. Okay. I don't have a behind camera on this car. Okay, so what's the screen for? It like hooks up with your phone, and then you can run phone apps and stuff through it. Such as? Google Maps. Right, hang on. Music so, and podcasts. Wait, hang on a second. Let me just Go get on. this in my head. So you're driving. Yep. The screen is, I'm assuming, to your left. Yep. How high up is it? Because if you're like maps and stuff, you're going to want it kind of in your periphery, yeah? No, because it will t- talk to you. Okay, right. You know, it does the like turn left up ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's normally you good can just to glance down to... it, Liam. I'm just, I'm gonna, you know, I'm pretty positive that the car companies that make these cars have done more research into this than me and you sitting in our chairs talking about it. So I think we can safely assume that if they've built it that way, it's probably all right because it's not just one car; it's most cars with screens. Yeah, what I'm just saying is, um, it, you think to me, wrong? it seems dangerous to have to right. look down at yeah. a screen in a way. No, from I got the you. Road. So you are, you are doubting the guys that have made and designed cars for years and have yeah. been selling these cars and had them safe, safely you know, certified on roads and stuff. No, yeah, okay, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, because, point. right, let me just explain, right? Oh, this is why people think I'm a dick. Yeah, because you're, let's say you're driving, yeah, and you're looking at the road, which is a very important part of driving, but you don't, don't know where you're don't going. Don't get sarky at me because you're wrong because the car companies are doing it this way. Right, but can you, so don't can you see dick why it, it you are wrong? quite make sense using it for maps no, at least. No, because when you look at your sat-nav, which is in the middle of your, like, so say, do you have a, do you use sat-nav? Yeah, like... Do you have an actual, do you have one of the ones that, like, attaches to your windshield? Um, or to well, your, no, it doesn't yeah. attach to the windshield. I base. have, like, a, a base for it to go on, because it was making yeah. the windshield dirty. Yeah, fair enough. So, yeah. when you look at that, you're aware yeah. that you aren't looking at the road, right? You're looking at the sat-nav. Well, I can look at it with my periphery. I'm sorry, what? How good is your peripheral vision? Good enough that I can see a sat nav if it's in my peripheral vision, and the I don't details have to on a sat nav. You could see a roundabout with four exits and go, "Cool, I'm taking the third exit." I can glance quickly, right? Which is you looking away from the road. I'm not going to stare at the fucking screen, Liam. You might. No, I'm, yeah, but I could do that if I had a normal sat nav. Mm, I I'm not sold on it. That's all I'm saying. It seems right. dangerous. Luckily for me, Liam, I don't actually need your appro- approval, which is as you can tell because I've bought a fucking car. It's yeah. Gone. So all I'm saying is, like, I feel like that screen possibly will have other uses, but maybe not a dangerous one like the maps, is what I'm saying. I honestly can't get my head around why you think the maps is the dangerous bit. Because I'm worried, Jack, that you're going to be driving in, a, in an area you don't know, and you're lost, and you're driving, driving, and you look down at the maps to see where you're going, and you take your eyes away from the road, and then the next thing you know, bam, accident, you're dead. But you could... Do- what I'm saying... You're Liam- dead. What I'm saying, no, Liam... You're dead. You can't say stuff Liam, when you're dead. what I'm saying is... Sorry, you dead. could do that with your sat-nav. How? If you looked at your sat-nav, your eyes would be off the road. How, I wouldn't know. Scr- 
Because yes, even would. if I looked at the sat nav, my peripheral would still see the road. Yeah, if I look into the middle, of, if you look at your radio, people have radios in their cars that they pr- like use when they're driving, Liam. It's there. Oh, it's dangerous though. It's not. Otherwise, it's like, they wouldn't allow it. Right. It's like how you shouldn't text and drive. Now, if you have that's because phone you up, have to take a hand off the wheel, and you have to hold a phone up, and it's distracting. You can drive one-handed if you have like. That's an uh, no, you can't. That's against the rules. What rules? That's, the, did you pass your test? Yeah. Are you legally allowed to drive? Those legally. rules, the rules of the road. They say that you should... Okay, no. You know when the police pull you over for being on your phone, Liam? That's not like... They're not just going to slap your hand and go, right, don't so, worry, there aren't real sorry, rules on the road. Explain, explain we just, something uh, to me. We just made that up so people would listen to us. No, sure, explain something to me then. So you're driving with two hands on the wheel, right? Yeah. Okay, you're driving... You're allowed to use your other hand to change the fucking gear stick, yeah. Okay, but what about changing the radio? That's probably not advised. But, but you just said that that was what people do. Yeah, it's not advised. I'm not going to be touching right. mine, so I'm going to be using it as a sat-nav. Can, can you not use it as a sat-nav and a radio? Like, do you not have a radio as well? Yeah, but I have controls on one of the flappy paddles next to the wheel. Yeah, same. I've got I've got little... Like, you can do the volume and stuff on the wheel. Yep. The, the future, man. It's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. But, I also, I didn't realise until I got home and the guy gave me, like, a, a booklet thing and was like, oh, you know, it's it's this one in the book... If you want to have a look and see what you've got, sort of thing. Yeah, because it yeah, was yeah. me, and it was very quick, and I didn't really ask a lot that I probably should have. Did you test drive but, a bit? No, I can't. I've not driven for seven years. So you didn't test drive your car. No. Okay. I mean, did your right. dad test drive it at least? No. Okay. Right. Sorry. I'm, what does it matter? Because what if you don't like the way it drives? I'm not going to give a shit because it's a car. So can I just use an example? Yeah. Go on. I drove for probably seven, eight years. With a, yep. in, a, in a manual, right? So that was my first car. Drove for ages in a manual. And when I was looking at new cars, I was like, oh, it doesn't really bother me if I get a manual or an automatic. But I'll test drive both, okay? I test drove a Vauxhall Corsa, with like a newer model. Bearing in mind, what I was driving was an older model. Yeah. And the, the way the newer models have their um, clutch, for some reason, it's a lot higher than, like, the car I was used to. So when I was test driving it, I just couldn't fucking like it was it was like a learner driver was driving it because the clutch was just completely throwing me off. So I was like, right, that's kind of solid solidified in my mind. I do not want that car because I can't get on with the clutch. Right. See now, just a quick quick question that I yeah. have for you. Okay. Is that possibly and mm-hmm. I don't want you to answer stuff finished, could yep. that possibly be because mm-hmm. you had already convinced yourself that you wanted an automatic but you sort of felt like you needed an excuse to pay the slight extra amount to get an automatic. No, I hadn't mm. test drove an automatic at that but point. But had you... No, no, But... See, I haven't driven an automatic, but mm. I know that I probably would quite like an automatic, but I'm also fine with a manual. Well, no, because I didn't want to pay extra, really, if I could have helped it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. I know yeah. you didn't want to pay extra, so did you possibly subconsciously want an automatic, so come up with some sort of bullshit excuse? No, I mean, when I was at this okay. point in looking, I had zero like idea of automatic. It wasn't really on my radar. It was uh, it was only happenstance that. When did, um, when did you get this car in like the eighties? Well, no, like, obviously I knew what automatics were, okay. but I didn't think I would bothered looking into getting one. It was only I was at a different um, garage, I guess, where you buy cars from. Car, car shop. showroom. It wasn't a show. No, it's called a showroom though. Well, depends. if you go to like a proper place, but if you're buying it second hand, some of us can't afford fancy. First hand cars, Jack. I'm not buying I'm on a plan, Liam, so don't be a dick about it. No, but it's it's brand new, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some but I'm not paying like sixteen grand. No, you're doing like a monthly thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah. So I went to a garage and I got to test drive a couple of manuals and then they were like, Well, we have an automatic if you want to give it a go. I was like, Well, I've never tried it before, why not? So that's what swung me, because I, I was really struggling with the clutches. I don't know if they've like changed the way they're building clutches or something, but that's why I think it's um, useful to test yeah. drive something. Okay, I get your point. Yeah. But I'll, I want to point you back to what I earlier said, which mm-hmm. is, like, that makes sense to me. What you're saying makes sense to me. Yeah. If you've driven for seven years. I yeah. have had a period of time, seven years of time, where okay. I haven't driven a car, right? Yeah. I am not getting behind the wheel of this car. Until I've got lessons, I'm having. I'm, when I get the car, I'm yeah. booking someone. To say, look, I need a refresher, like couple of lessons, of just course. to remind me of all the shit. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's probably smart. So you said getting behind that car, it felt like being a learner again. 
Yeah. I am going to be a learner again. Okay. So I'm going to learn this car. I have so a question. If I'd got a different car, Liam, it wouldn't mm. matter if I sat in it and put my foot down and was like, oh, the clutch is in a different place. Because yeah. it would have been different than the learner car that I was learning in if I'd booked someone beforehand. Yeah. I want to learn with this car. But it, it is possible, right? Theoretically, that you could get in a car and be like, oh, I don't like the way this feels. No, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I can. I don't think I'm going to be like that. Okay. Um, because I haven't driven. I'm probably not going to like the way anything feels because I'll probably be terrified that I'll kill someone. Yeah. How are you going to get the car from my the parents? Showroom? Are going to drive it? Okay. And then, so when you're when you're booking these lessons, mm-hmm. you're going to book it for in your car or just in a yeah in my car. Yeah, that's the whole point. I'm going to book it in my car. Is that like because I, I, I obviously I've never looked into doing lessons like that. Is that a thing? Because I know like. Yeah, because they teach people. Uh, they t- there are learners who get taught in the car that they've already been bought. Okay. Yeah. Also, I'm not a learner, so like. No, you have a driving uh, license. Yeah, actually, no. Yeah, that's the point because some of them, some driving instructors have like their own set of pedals, right? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not a learner. I, I can legally drive a car. Yeah. But so you they're just not going to be some... like, well, I can't take you out because I'll be like, no, 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 you don't understand. If you don't take me out, I yeah. will just teach myself, and that's not going to end well for anyone. What about getting like your dad to teach you? No. No. My family doesn't do teaching each other. Why not? Because I think my granddad taught my mum and possibly my dad as well how to drive. Okay. And it's apparently just not good. Also, like, it's because they get more... Like, your family, because they're closer to you, are more worried about things that you sh- they shouldn't worry about. Yeah. So I don't particularly want them to teach me. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you uh, excited to be back on the road again? Yeah. That's good. And just make life easier. Yeah. I mean, I, I just... I really want self-driving cars to be a thing already. Yeah, but I think it's good to know how to drive. Oh, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. I think if you have a self-driving car, you should know what to do if you need to take over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the whole point of a self-driving car is you should never need to do that. Yeah. Like, if, if I think for self-driving cars to be at their maximum efficiency, everyone needs to have one. Yeah, which probably won't happen for, you know... Yeah, years. years. Yeah. But, yeah, um, I'm very excited for that to be a thing. I, I think... Like, I'm not as into tech as you are, but I think that's the sort of thing that I'd be happy to be an early adopter of. I mean, you could be now, Liam. It's very expensive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm not. Save up. Nah, there's other things I'd rather buy. Stop buying DVDs. Nah. To be fair, I don't buy DVDs that much anymore. You bought that Arrow DVD recently. It was a Blu-ray. Sorry, Blu-ray. Yeah, I buy a lot of Blu-rays, but I haven't bought a DVD in a long time. Fucking asshole. It's a dying format. Yeah. Um, You knew what I meant. Have you been up to anything else, or just sort of car shopping i mean there's been other stuff no the weekends both weekends now have been the car shopping so yeah no what, not what really. color is the most important question oh well i wanted like i don't particularly mind color because again you know you've seen what i look like i don't particularly care about my appearance that's a polite way of saying it yeah exactly tramp yeah. i have been called by some people but so i was like the only thing i i said to him all i care about yeah color wise is i want it to I suppose, this, after saying that, this is going to sound like I am quite picky, but I'm not. Because I, I would have gone with any colour, but I was like, because c- they were getting, they had just got new ones. Okay. So he was like, there's, you know, you can pretty much choose anything. Yeah. So I was like, well, I prefer black, but I'm happy with grey. Okay. And so, like, he d- ended up, he was like, all right, I'll have a look around because they've just done the new ones. There should be some floating around. I'll see, you know, as close as, you know, I could get you a car within two to three weeks. Yeah. And he rung me the other day and went, there's no black ones left. So I'm getting a grey one. Okay. Which I'm fine with. Yeah, I mean, so when I was looking, I was the same because, right, I I have this perfect logic where if I if I have a car, black it's going to show dirt less, right? Mm-hmm. Which to me that that makes sense. But everyone I've spoken to about it who are like adults and shit are like, no, 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 black shows dirt. So oh yeah, no, where, it shows dust. Yeah, like it really. There was a point where I got really facetious with my mother because um, this was a while back. I was shopping for cutlery, and I found. Um, I can't remember what colour it was, but she was like, no, you don't want to get that, it will show dirt. I think it was like a black thing, like a black plate, and it just really wound me up. So, well, um, Which bit wound you up? The fact that your mum was telling you this and you thought you were right? Just the, I was like, how can a black thing show up dirt? But she ridiculous. is right. Ridiculous. Yeah, but it's ridiculous. Okay. At the time you thought it was ridiculous. No, I still think it is. I think, I think the issue is that they're not making things black enough. No, because then it would show clearer, because the issue is you, that dirt isn't black. Well, it should be. That's the association you're doing, is you're, well, you're thinking be. of, like, a dark puddle of mud. Yeah. Or, like, but, well, it depends what you're eating. Like, I had a, a roast dinner the other night with a lot of mint sauce, and mint sauce is black when that's left on your plate. Right, yeah. So, yes, if you were just eating mint sauce, then, yeah, you're yeah. white. <laughs> exactly, thank you. Um, 
So yeah, I, I got a silver car because apparently silver is the best for not showing dirt, although I think that's bullshit. Fair enough. But like white is obviously the worst, right? Yeah, I think white would be the worst. Although yeah. again, dust wouldn't show on a white car. Well actually, and thinking about it right, the issue I've got with my car is I've had to park underneath like um a telephone pylon thing. You've got the bird poo. But, but yeah. Now if it was a white car, I probably wouldn't see it. No, you would, because bird poo's white and black. I need a white and black car, Jack. I need a speckled car. I mean, the way it's going, it won't be long. <laughs> That's disgusting. Clean yeah. your car. No, I did. That's the most annoying thing. I literally cleaned it like three weeks ago, and then a week later, birds just shat all over it. Stop parking under the tree. Oh, well, I will be soon. Oh, cause you're, yeah, your news. Look at that. Look at that. That was brilliant. I wish you'd stop pointing out the segues, because it sort of detracts from them. If we don't point them out, people won't know that they're there. I mean, they they will. <laughs> nah. Um... Okay. I'm moving soon, hopefully. Well, definitely, but hopefully, if you know what I mean. You're definitely moving soon, but you're trying yeah. to sort out where. Yes. So I've been I've been served my notice by my crazy landlady. Yeah, because you killed all those fish. She's scared. I, the I'm government the government off. contacted her and said, "There's these right. new fish that you need will to not shut die. your face right now." Because I went to the pond on what day? Sunday, a couple of days ago now, and there were, I shit you not, at least twenty. Yeah, that's what I mean. Fish. There's two. There's you. You killed them all, the original ones, and you've bred their like they died. And then they had offspring children that had been born in the time period that the fish were dead. They right. were spawn eggs. They let's ex- hatch and let's, become let's, mutant fish. Let's explain for our listeners because I think we've told. I think we've told them. Yeah, but you know, let's tell new them listeners again. not know. Uh, when I moved into this place, there was a pond in the back garden that I wasn't didn't really know about, and it had four quite big fish in it. I was like, right, well, I guess this is my responsibility now to keep these alive. Great. Which I didn't really want, to be honest. Like, I I don't want kids. It's sort of like one of those uh, comedy films from the 90s where a, a dad who didn't know he was a dad suddenly gets the kids sprung on him. And it's exactly it. like Jungle to Jungle, yes. Exactly like that. Um, so, I, I was feeding him, and I think you might remember, Jack, like, at first I got quite into it, and I was quite excited that I had this power to, like, look after something and... Do you remember, like, you'd come and visit and I'd show you how the fish were doing? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah, it was very exciting, wasn't it? No. Uh, I got a bit into it and I brought some more fish. Would you say that's the worst mistake you've made at the place? No. Okay. Uh, So I brought six fish to give company to the four big ones. And, you know, as time goes on, the four big ones, one just disappeared. Don't know where it went. Like, if it was to die, you would expect there to be a body. It just disappeared. Well, something something ate it. Isn't that what we sort of decided in the end? Has to be. Has to. It's the only logical conclusion, right? Yeah. Um, and then, like, time went on a little bit longer, and I definitely forgot to feed them for a while. Yes. Um, and then there was at one point where I had some gardeners come in, because the garden was a bit out of control. And uh, this was just after I'd been away for a week. And um, that w- when I came back, I found a dead fish floating which was very tragic, but they hadn't been fed in a while, so also sort of to be expected. So I did the heroic thing, and I fished it out and just sort of plonked it at the bottom of the garden and just let nature take care of it. And um, had the gardeners in, and I explained the situation. I said, could you just look to see if there's any signs of life in that pond? But I doubt it, because I feel like the water's probably been polluted. And like the other thing is, I don't want people to think I'm just like an irresponsible owner here. You are? Um, no, 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 no. Let, let me explain, Jack. There is a pump in the pond... But there's a leak somewhere in it, and I've tried to look at where, and I couldn't. I've, there's been times when I've had wellies on, I've been in the pond, wading around, trying to find where this leak is, and I couldn't But you it. didn't feed them. Yeah, ignore that. So if I turn the no, pond no, on... No, no, that's the bit that makes you the bad owner, Liam. No, because if, if I turn the pump on to, to filter out all of the impurities in the pond, what it then does is it actually drains the pond, which is terribly inconvenient. So... The gardeners came and they they were like, we, we didn't see any life, so it's safe to say that any fish that were in there are probably dead. So I thought, you know what? don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm just going to drain it. So I turned the pump on. And I was only going to do it for a couple of hours, just because I figured if I get it to like half level, I can have a little cheeky check to see if there's anything in there. Makes sense, right? Yeah, sure. I forgot. Just left it on um, overnight, to be honest. I went out the next day and I was like, what's that noise? Oh, shit, yeah. But I went to to check, and because the pond is terribly built... Um, This broken pump didn't actually fully drain it. There was like three or four medium-sized puddles at the bottom of the pond. And staring up at me was a good, like, six fish. So I filled it back up. And from there, 
you know, every now and again I might forget to feed them for a month or two, but they seem to be quite happy. And don't forget, it's, it's not like the, the pond is barren. There's vegetation and stuff in there, so they can munch on that if they need to. And now there's like, there's, I, there's a, so all of the big ones that were initially there when, when I moved in, they've gone. Don't know yeah, where, but they've they're, gone. They're probably dead. Yeah, almost definitely. But there are now at least three generations of the fish that I brought. And we're looking at, I think, at last count, I counted a good 20 that I could see at one time. So there's probably more that just weren't coming for food at that time. But are you, tr- are you trying to claim this as like, look what I've done, I've got all these fish? I'm trying to claim it as like, it's not a complete disaster. Right, okay, because it's not, but that's thanks yeah. to like Mother Nature and the fish themselves. It's got literally nothing to do with you. No, I could have just killed them all. Those fish, it's not, this story isn't the story of some fish that got a wonderful owner who raised and cared for them. This is the, a story of survival. Yes. This is the story of like, this is their post-apocalypse. They got saved from a really nice fish store where they were looked after. Well, we don't know they were looked in after pond. in the fish store. Probably better than you were. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. It, the thing is, fish require a lot of, um, what's the word? Motivation. Like, it's easy to, to forget they're there. Because they're at the bottom of the Oh, right, sorry. Then. The fish themselves don't require motivation. No, they, they, I need to be motivated. Yeah, got you. I thought you were talking about the because, fish. I was like, what, yeah, what, like are you, what are you motivating the fish to do? Like, put it this way. If I had a dog, for example, and I forgot to feed it, it would remind me. Yes. Fish can't do that. So I have are to you, remember. Wait, are you now trying to blame the fish? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I feel like you're trying to blame sort of everything except yourself. Yeah. Okay. Because other people... Also, you're not meant to feed them when it's too cold because they can't digest food properly. Their, their, their digestive system stops working if it gets below a certain temperature. Yeah. So they're, they're, what I'm saying is, right, when you say, oh, looking after fish, it's like the easiest thing in the world, there's complications to it. I mean, it is it's the easiest pet to look after. I disagree. I think something that, like could actually... Half a year you don't have to feed it. What about that's like not a, a reason that makes it harder, Liam. That's easier. What about like a cactus? That's not a pet. Okay. It's a plant. What about a Venus flytrap? Also a plant. People act like they're pets sometimes, though. No, they don't. Okay. Well, all I'm saying is, you know, I, I, there's now more fish than when I started, so I did a really good job. Nature did a very good job, despite you. Well, I, I think, really, what I've done is I've bred some amazingly resistant, resilient fish. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. Those are Spartan fish, like, yeah. for sure. If you put any other breed of fish in there, they would devour it. There's definitely been a time when I looked in there and it looked like there was a fish swimming around with another fish carcass in its mouth. Yeah, because they definitely had to eat each other to live, Liam. 100%. Can fish turn cannibal? Yes. And they do. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't think, because like, they're not meat eaters. Like, I know I'm, you can no, get some I'm, fish I'm that are, they can eat decaying stuff. But they wouldn't kill a fish, would they? Fish kill, fish kill other fish, like, a lot. Even non-cannibal like, ones. Right, so I've, I thought I'd be too, ge- too general here. Like, cause pe- I don't want people writing in and being like, well, obviously, what do you think whales and sharks eat? Like, yeah, I don't have a fucking whale Yeah, you're talking about specifically, garden. like, pond like, goldfish. Yes. I'm pretty positive... Don't, again, I don't know because I don't raise fish. No. I'm not a fish expert like you, Liam. Of course. But I'm pretty positive that goldfish can eat. Possibly they don't kill... Maybe they don't eat, you know, take chunks out of fish. Yeah, yeah. But if there's like a decaying carcass of another fish... They might have a little nibble. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, I don't know how we got onto the fish sitch. You were talking uh, about moving. Yeah, I know. I don't know how the fish... Well, I guess it's, this is how the fish relate to that. Um, there's not a pond in the new place. So you don't have fish. So I won't be able to move... Because I, I was actually really willing to move the fish with me. I feel like they've earned that right. <laughs> or they might just feel like that's more punishment. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. You should leave these fish. They're going to get a lovely new owner. How long do you have left until you have to move out? Uh, end of November. So about, you know, a couple of months. Yep. So the thing is, like, it, I was quite relaxed all through um, September when I was looking for places. It wasn't a big push. But over the last week... Places have been coming up on, on right move, for example, and their availability isn't until like the middle of December. So yeah, that's yeah. when I started panicking a little bit because I was like, oh, don't want the perfect place to come up, but I then have two weeks where I can't. Like, I'd have to move back home for two weeks and it would just be a nightmare. So uh, on Saturday, we went, looked at a few places, found a really nice one, and have kind of. The way renting works has changed since I looked for this place right. like three years ago, where it used to be. You'd go to like a letting agent, they'd show you around a place, you'd like it, and you'd pay a deposit, and they'd take it off the market. Now, you have to like actually apply. So you, you fill out a load of forms, 
send them and they would then take them to the the landlord and the landlord basically says if they want to go ahead with you or not I don't think that's, then... I don't think renting's changed. I think it's always been two different ways of doing it because I think a landlord can just say like I don't really care, just get someone in there. Yeah, because I mean and then the I... agent doesn't care. But if a landlord says I want to vet people, I think yeah, you have to let them. Well, I've never had it from however long I've been renting. I've been looking at a few places over the years. I've yeah, never but you rent around this. Portsmouth where they just had ex students, so they probably didn't give a shit. That's true. But even when I was looking to move out of Portsmouth, there wasn't really a lot of this. So, I don't know, but yeah, so we're waiting to basically see if the landlord wants to go ahead with us or not, and then, fingers crossed, we should find out by the end of this week. Fair enough. So, that's my life. Sounds very stressful. Yeah, it's not been great, Jack. We've got some housekeeping to do. This is Liam's new section. Have you given it a fancy name, Liam? Housekeeping. With Liam Underwood. Yeah, sure. We had a tweet come in about our last episode, so so just to let people know, housekeeping is basically where we catch up on... um, for example, if we start a TV show, right, and um, we only do like the first six episodes or three episodes, and then we carry it on, housekeeping is where we can talk about how it's going. So I haven't watched any more Sense8, to be honest. No. Nope. So I, d- I do still want to, don't get me yeah. wrong. I'm just, I've, I've set myself the goal of finishing Smallville before the end of this year. Yeah, and yeah. Are you, and are you on track for that? Yeah, I've I've just finished like the first four episodes of season nine. How many seasons are there? Ten. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's doable. Yeah, it's it's definitely doable. I just keep getting distracted by other things. Like I started watching. Um, have you seen Taskmaster at all? Uh, no, I've seen the adverts for it. Yeah, uh, we we started, it's, it's available online. Uh, Dave has its own. So Dave is the channel, not just a friend. Um, that it's on. It's a British channel, and it has its own like player on its website. So we've oh, been watching enough. the older episodes through that. Uh, it's good. It's good. That, and also, I've been watching a lot of South Park. So I'm getting distracted from Smallville a little bit. But yeah, we had a tweet about the last episode. What did episode. the tweet say, Liam? It was from Gibbo, or at that geek caveman. And he said, um, this was in relation to a topic that we were talking about. Uh, he said, talking about using toilet paper and hashtag ghost poo, I have been thinking, how does a blind person know when to stop wiping? And I'm this. This is what I want out of our podcast, Jack. I want our podcast to get people thinking those sorts of questions. I mean, did you look up the answer? No, I was quite happy with um, the answer that your friend Tom provided. Well, not an answer, answer. He inferred. He said those poor C and I dogs. <laughs> and then Gibbo responded with one bark for keep going and two to stop, which I was quite happy with as an answer. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think that's how they do it, but yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, as far as answers go, satisfied. So that was housekeeping with Liam Underwood. <laughs> was that it? We don't get a lot of correspondence, Jack. Oh, fair enough. Um, we have got another section, though, that we're, we're missing. Go on. Liam went to the cinema, didn't he? And uh, now it's time for a spoiler-free review of the film that he saw in the cinema. What film did you go and see, Liam? It was a documentary. It was a Louis Theroux documentary. I like Louis Theroux. I'm indifferent to him. Like Some are good, some are a bit meh. Um, it's called My Scientology Movie. Mm-hmm. It was an early birthday treat for Kat because she wanted to go, and this screening uh, was was followed by like a, a live Q and A, but it wasn't really live because it was filmed in like a London cinema and then just broadcast to other cinemas. So it was it was happening as you watched, but you yeah, weren't it was live, at the Q&A. but he wasn't live there. Yeah, got you in front of me. Um, so my one thing, I think I might have even said to you before going in, the one thing I wanted is I didn't want the whole documentary to just end with me coming out and being like oh Scientology is a bit weird isn't it like I didn't want that to be the only takeaway because I know that I've seen other things like I've seen a South Park episode where my takeaway was oh Scientology is a bit weird isn't it and that was 20 minutes long this was like a feature length documentary so you're talking a minimum of 90 minutes and my basic takeaway was Scientology is a bit weird isn't it yeah right okay okay hold your horses Liam but that's it that's all there was to no, it no 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 hold your horses my horses are held just Hold them in place. Because a documentary, right? Right. It's it's not... I don't know why you were expecting there to be a bigger takeaway. Like, because the thing that I would assume, having not seen it... Yeah. The thing that I'd assume would be interesting yeah. would be seeing exactly what they're doing that's no. weird. Because they've shown well, trailers and stuff. Yeah. And the trailers have, you know, the scenes with, like, people rocking up with cameras to film him. Yeah. yeah. Right? So yeah. that's the stuff that I would imagine would be interesting. Like, you, when you watch a nah. Lion documentary, right? Yeah. You, it doesn't... Yeah. You don't have a takeaway. It's not like people going to lion documentaries being like, when I leave this, I'm really hoping that they tell me that lions are aquatic. 
Because they won't let him. They won't. No, we that know would be about ridiculous. that. That would be ridiculous. But here's what I'm saying, Jack. What is the point of making a documentary, right, where the takeaway is something that everyone already it's not, knows? That's what I'm saying. No, Liam, that's what I'm saying. I feel like you're ignoring me. I'm trying to, because you're I know. being just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not. What I'm saying is t- that documentaries don't necessarily have a takeaway. It's more about learning about whatever the topic is. Okay. Documentaries are basically a different form of storytelling, okay? If we yeah, get an intro, sure. right? So a documentary will present what the person behind the camera wants you to, to see and yep. will have generally a message of sorts, okay? Right. So like one of the most famous documentaries is um, Blackfish, which was all about the um, how the, the killer, killer whales are kept in sea whales. Yeah, I've never seen it. No, I haven't. It's just one of the most famous documentaries. Yeah. And their message is basically, this is bad. So they yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they went the in with that agenda. Yeah. So what I was hoping for from this was a different take on Scientology. Like, not necessarily like, oh, let's all convert to Scientology. But like, yeah, maybe there's these weird elements to it. But here's why. Like, this is what, what no, those people d- yeah, yeah, believe sorry. and why. D- you said you knew about Scientology. Clearly well, you have fucking don't ideas. if you thought that there was the chance there'd be a documentary that went, actually, it's not as weird as you think. Because it is, Liam. It's weirder than we think. Yeah. No, it's, so what, it's absolutely... This is what I don't understand. You're annoyed because the documentary didn't do something that it can't do because that thing isn't real. You've just invented it. So why make it? Because he's point? telling you about what's weird. It, it isn't, though. It, it basically, here's the thing. If it actually went into it and was like, this, these are the reasons why it's weird, then fine. But it, it literally was just... It was all a bit weird. That's that's it. Like, it touched a little bit on the fact that um, some of the top Scientologists were quite abusive and how that's not really widely reported. And it got, like, ex-Scientology members to come and get involved. But because he never had access to anyone within the Church of Scientology, it was a very one-sided, like, story. Like, if, if it was like, right, I'm going to talk to an ex-member and a current member and get those two viewpoints, that would have been interesting, I think. Because whenever we hear about Scientology, we never hear about it necessarily from them. It's always, like again, like the South Park episode, for example, it's people looking at it and going, this is weird. I would have really liked to have seen actual Scientologists talk about why they believe stuff that is clearly weird. Do you see why I'm disappointed? No. Why not? I get what no no I, sorry I get why you're disappointed. Yeah, it's one of those issues that we've already covered multiple times where you have unrealistic expectations of how things should be. But what's the point of doing it if you're not going to say anything new? What are you what 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 yeah what are you talking about? All right, Jack. That, that's okay, Liam. Let's do this. Yeah. You watch a lot of movies. Yes. Are you saying that all your movies that you like? Every single one is unique and tells a story in its own special way. They'll, All of them have will. a different moral message. Right, movies... Every single one. Don't do things the same way, Quentin Tarantino. Don't you be doing a film that's based on other people's works, because that would be shit, says Liam. The movies is that, that what I you're like saying? will all have something unique about them. Right. The unique thing about this one mm-hmm. would be... Is it Louis Theroux's yeah, view on Doing Louis Theroux. Right. Seen that. What? What? When? And all of his other documentaries when he's... No, I'm saying his view on Scientology. I don't care. Yeah, see, that's the issue. See, we've boiled it down. What you do, Liam, is you either... And I believe that you didn't this time. Yeah. I will give you the leeway to assume that you didn't go in wanting to hate it. No, no, I... I, I know. I, I, because I've we talked about it before and I genuinely was like, Liam sounds like he's legitimately going to try and see the good in this, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think what you do do yeah. is when <laughs> you come out of something and you're like, I don't like do it. Do do. Yeah. Very good. When you come out of something and you've like you you end it with I don't like this. Yeah. What you do is you come up with a very not convoluted because it's not complex. What you're saying it makes sense on some levels. It's got you know merit to it, and I could see people agreeing with you 100. percent They should. But you do that. You say these big sweeping things, and then when you really boil it down, yeah, you actually get to the real reason you don't like it. Yeah. Which is I don't care about Louis Theroux. So what you've got is a core. Yeah. Of the actual reason you don't like something that you just coat. But like here's a layer the thing. of chocolatey bullshit. Right, but here's the thing, Jack. Much like Sense Eight, actually, where we had a giant argument about uh, the the your main issue with the with the show, and then very quickly revealed. Well, I say very quickly, like fifteen minutes later, went. But to be honest, if they'd done it the other way, it, I would have also not liked that. So yeah, I'm just honest. It's not honesty. Yeah, it is. Like because you said, it's oh well, bullshit. that just completely invalidated your your whole argument. I was like, yeah, I could have not said that 
to make my argument stronger. But I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if I think something's wrong, but I also think the way to fix that is also wrong, I'm going to say both of these things are wrong. Okay, so honestly, what was your biggest issue with the Louis Theroux documentary? My biggest was issue... It, was it the not liking Louis Theroux? Or no, was it the no, he didn't give me a good me- a, 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 the, a message? As I said, I've, I'm indifferent to Louis Theroux. I've liked some of his stuff. I think as a person, he's fine. I, I like his approach to documentaries. I like when he's just sort of... Uh, for those that don't know, one of the very like Louis Theroux things he does is he'll ask a question... And um, when someone will answer, you know, normally, like, sometimes you ask questions, someone answers, and there's a pause, you you kind of jump in to try and almost help them out. Yeah, he, just he just stays just, yeah. quiet. And even when they finished answering, he'll just stay quiet, staring at them, and then they might, like, add something else in. And that's when it gets yeah. interesting, because it's those, like, awkward silences that they then try to fill, and they actually find themselves getting tangled up with their own words. That's what I think he does well. And he does it a couple of times here, but not a whole lot. It just felt like, I think, because he didn't have access to the Church of Scientology, he had no choice but to present a one-sided view of this topic, and it's a, it's a side that's already been covered. So I feel like my biggest issue was that it didn't need to be done. If, if, if they could have found a new take on the topic, it would have been interesting, but it was just more of the same. Okay. Two and a half out of five. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, it wasn't boring or anything, but and it was put together very well, and there was a couple of funny moments, but I don't feel like I now know more about Scientology than I knew when I went in. Right. And I think that should be one of the goals of a documentary, it should definitely be an, a level of education. And also, I'm not an expert in Scientology, so there's definitely a, a lot of room for me to learn new stuff. Fair enough, I guess. The Q&A afterwards also was only okay. Yeah, did anyone ask him anything good? Like, there was a couple of good questions, but... It, it again. It didn't really feel like it gave you a lot more information. In fact, because it was Q and A with him and the director, and I actually think the director was a bit more interested in the Q and A than even he was. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, I would go. There was a at, at my local cinema. They did one a, a couple of weeks back where it was um, a Beatles documentary was recently released, uh, and they had a Q and A with I believe the director, who's one Howard. And at the oh, time, okay. I really wanted to go, but for whatever reason, I couldn't make it. And I was really glad about that. So. It hasn't like put me off of ever doing it again, but it would have to be a topic that I think I'm like really interested in. Cause it, it yeah, well, that also, makes sense. It was like two and a half hours in total. Yeah. So, but you also went to the cinema, didn't you? I did. I so went you, to see. Well, before that, you know what that means it's time for, right? It's time for Jack went to the cinema and he saw a film too, and he's going to tell you what he thought about it as well. And he probably we won't we won't fall out as much because no spoilers. And also, he won't spoil the film for you. I went to see Magnificent Seven. So that's um, a remake of... The Magnificent Seven. Yep. And this I've one, never seen the original. Neither have I. I'm not much into westerns. I like westerns. I went through a, a period of time at uni where I, I like wanted to track down the good ones because I'm not a fan of the particular... Like, I've not watched a lot of old ones, but I really yeah. hate the corny old ones. Yeah, yeah. You're more into the spaghetti westerns where they've got like an Italian influence and they're a bit more violent. Yes. The yeah. spaghetti westerns. Uh, some of the like, uh, Clint Eastwood stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. the good, the bad, and the ugly, that kind of thing. I've never seen the good, bad, and the ugly. No, they're right. I, 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 so it's part of like an unofficial trilogy. Is it? Yeah, it's um, the third entry. Before that, you've got uh, a fistful of dollars, and then for a few dollars more. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and I've seen those two, but then I, I just stopped <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, fair I didn't even mind them. I just, it's, it's one of those like classics that I need to tick off my list at some point. Yeah, yeah. It's the same for me. It's, it's always been sitting there. Yeah. And I've always been like, I should watch that now. Yeah, I mean, my, my issue with Westerns, before you go into your thoughts yeah, on yeah. this film, it's always the same. Like, it, it's one of those genre films that is very, like, rigidly stuck to its genre, where it's always, or at least nearly always, a stranger comes into a town, there's a problem in the town, the stranger fixes it, usually with violence, and then the stranger leaves. Like, that's pretty much every Western ever. Yeah, yeah, so, that's fair. how was The Magnificent Seven? Uh, it was that storyline. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but it's not, it's actually... All right, it's. I liked it. It, it. I mean, the selling point was the cast, right? Yeah, it's like a really star-studded cast. So you got Chris Pratt. Yep. Who else? Uh, thingy, thingy, and uh, thingy. Cool. Okay. Those you know stars. me. I don't know actor names. Okay. Yeah, that's true. If you say if you say their names, like the the main like the other main lead guy, other than Chris Pratt. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Uh, I know. Oh, Denzel Washington. Yeah, it is Denzel Washington. Isn't it. Oh, it's got Ethan Hawke in it as well. 
cool. I like I Ethan Hawke. And it's oh, got, Ethan uh, Hawke, yeah, I do know who that is. Yeah, and it's got Vincent D'Onofrio, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but uh, he played Kingpin in Daredevil. Did he? Yeah. Oh, in the, also... new, in, the new, in the TV series? Yeah, sorry, in the I thought you, Netflix. Weirdly, Daredevil. I went to Ben Affleck and was like, there's not a big black guy in this film. Uh, yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio isn't black. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's white. He was also in yeah. Jurassic World. Um, yeah. He's, he's kind of most famous maybe for a full metal jacket. Oh, okay. So, but... Is there anyone else in it that I know? There's no one else in it that I recognise. Fair enough. But it's, so that's like, it is, it's quite a big cast of like, you know, people. top people. Yeah. But like, ah, it's, I like Western films, like you were saying, that sort of standard storyline, it's not great. Yeah. Like, I like it when it's a little bit more grey area e. Like, like, like when morally? Yeah, I like okay. that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a big fan of the moral grey area stuff. Yeah. Whereas this is very clear cut on who the bad guy is. Yeah, I guess when you've got like a cast with such big names, I can't say that really surprises me because I, I feel like um, someone like Denzel, for example, um, is very well known as being generally the, the very good guy. Isn't no, he? but I don't even mean I don't even mean that. Like, I mean literally the bad guy in this film. Yeah. Is so the stuff he does is comically evil. Oh, okay. Like, and illogical. Like, there were a lot of bits where I was turning to my mate who I was with, Sam, and was like, why Why is he doing that? That is not the way to do what he's trying to do. Okay, yeah, I get what you mean. Like, you know, it's the the thing that makes the good guys want to fight him or whatever, that sort of bullshit. And you're like, if he just hadn't done that thing that he didn't need to do... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd it's be like, fine. It's like, um, like pushing someone over, which is a bad act, and then when they're down, kicking them in front of everyone. It's like, we didn't need to kick him as well, did you? Yes, and it's a random stranger. Yeah. And they would, they the main person wasn't drunk, that sort of thing. And you're like, yeah. well, all right, he's the bad guy. Yes, it's that. It was that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. But like, other than that, the action in it was quite cool, and the story was fairly good, even though it was very rote. So I don't know. I I give it like I think three point five. That's quite a high score still. It is because it, it's a good film. Like it's a, f- a fun film to watch. Yeah. So you'd recommend it? Yeah, I think so. I don't think you'll like it. Why not? I don't know. Although I, I, you might do. It's kind of, if you go in knowing that it's like a, you know, more of an actiony film and not particularly Western-y. deep story. I yeah. mean, it is westerny. Okay. There's lots of, you know, six shooters and yeah. cigars. Do you know what? I did see a film, actually, this weekend that I really liked. Um, that I did want to talk about it. It came out on Blu-ray recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Sing Street. Oh, God, yeah. You texted me and told me I needed to watch it. Yeah, it's an Irish musical. Right. Um, just watch it. I don't want to say much more than that. I don't want to spoil okay. it or anything. It's about like the the very like the briefest plot description I can give is it's about a kid who has to change schools because his parents are a bit hard up for cash. Uh, outside the school, he meets this girl who he really fancies. Uh, so he decides to ask her if she wants to be in his music video, and he then decides, hang on a second, I now need a band. So it's it's that it's it's him putting together a band and stuff right. so he can spend more time with this girl. Okay, I will watch it, Liam. Yeah, and I like knowing you. You will like it. Yeah. Oh no, I, I I assume I will. It's a very you film. It sounds like. Yeah, it's very coming of age and musical. A musical based around school time. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, to be fair, I do typically prefer the American high school more so than. Um, yes. Like yes. British. Is, I I, I also have something that I'd forgotten. It sort of ties in with my the Western film that I watched. Okay. I've been watching. I've well, I've seen one episode of the new Westworld series. Heard it's really good. After watching, because I watched the film on your recommendation, I don't know if we kept it in the episode last time, but I you guys have said to me, oh, I think was Mark, Mark was saying to me that I, yeah. I should watch it. Yeah. So I, me and my dad sat down and watched that, ready yeah. for the TV series. Was and the I film the much film. good? Okay. The film's alright, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a good watch. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of really good practical effects for the time period and that sort of thing, which, you know, yeah. I'm a fan of. And, it, like, so it's a good film, but then this this series, like, the first episode is a bit, not Game of thrones because there's not, char- not the characters so much, but, like, you yeah. know when... You know when they're trying to establish stuff and the plot's not simple. Yeah, it's, it's, like they're just it's, like, um, okay, look, here's everything you need to know. Yeah, we're going to give it all to you. Yeah, and we it's sort of like with the implication that it will make sense. Just we're going to get there. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, I, I loved it. It's like what you get at the start of Game of Thrones when it feels like they're set in the chessboard before yeah, the yeah. games actually start. Yeah, but it, yeah. it takes a it, that's that's see, the th- the reason I then thought of that was you were saying the sort of very standard western storyline and this does a really good job of you sort of think that's what's going to happen okay. and then they just keep even though you know it's you know th- the future and not yeah. a real western but they they sort of pull that rug out from under you and you're like oh 
This what? is all sort of not what I was expecting. I think that's what TV does so well. It's because it has the time to, to really yeah. dive into that sort of thing. It's like what we were saying with The Walking Dead, where um, a lot of zombie films will just show you the outbreak, but that shows you what happens next. Yeah, because they've got because, the time to yeah. give it to you. Yeah. And I, I think that's definitely where TV is really kind of um, working better than film at the moment. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Um, you need to watch Luke Cage. I know. We'll talk about it next episode. I definitely will watch it. All right. Um, all I'll say, because I don't want to do spoilers on, I think. All I'll say is, m- not my least favourite of the Marvel stuff, but nowhere near the best. Not as good as Daredevil. Season one. Because I yeah. struggled with some of season two of Daredevil. Yeah, yeah. It's on par with the stuff I struggled with in season two. Oh, okay. I'd say, for me, the first episode of Luke Cage was really good. I really enjoyed it. Then it hit a real slump and didn't kind of recover until about episode six, I'd say. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll get it watched by next time and then we can have a more open discussion. Okay, cool. That's everything. Yeah, I think so. Culture swap. Swap my culture. What do we do then? This time, Liam. Yep. We read the manga. First yes. volume yes. of Berserk. Yes. Which by? I had the name. Yeah. I've closed it. Who's it by, Liam? Kentaro Miura. Very good. Now, Maybe. this wasn't this wasn't suggested to us, was it, by anyone? No, I saw that it mentioned on Reddit, and it looked yeah. really interesting. Yeah, so ne- neither of us had read this before. No. No one had told us to watch it. We just decided no. we're doing it. Yeah. If anything, I suggested it, right? Yeah, well, yeah, you were the one that put it forward, but I mean, it, I meant it in like a, neither of us had read it before and been like, oh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you should read this. Yes, got you. Yeah. It, it was a bit of a blind, like, we just hoped. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think? I was surprised. Not surprised, because I thought it'd be, you know, I didn't go in being like, it's going to be rubbish. No, that'd but be terrible. I, I, I liked it. I, like, it, t- it takes a while. I thought the first, because basically in the first volume, it's three stories. Yeah. And the first story is good. But it's, it's very much like an introduction to the main players, right? Yeah, and like, it feels very standalone Yeah. Like, you could you could have stopped reading after that first book and been told, oh, that was a one-shot that we were doing. Yeah. And you'd and have been then, like, oh, well, it seems like you were setting up, but I, I can see that it was a one-shot sort of thing. Yeah, and then I'd say story two built upon the world a bit more, and particularly the main character. Yeah. And then story three annoyed me. Well, yeah, so should we go through them in order? Yeah. Because I'd like to talk about them. Yeah, 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 no, of course. So, story one is called is it called the Black Swordsman. Yeah, and it's you. You meet the main character Guts. Yeah, and, and a little his... um, elf, <laughs> fairy. I thought it was an elf. Maybe it's an elf. I'm pretty sure it, it, it refers to itself as an elf. No, oh, well, I'm sorry. I might be the racist. I'm the fantasy racist. I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm sure elves are often persecuted and called fairies. It's elves, not elves. Well, that depends. No, it doesn't. It's not elves. It's never E L F S. Yeah, the Santa Claus ones are. No, they're not. They're elves. They're Santa's I'm elves. Sure. Yes. I'm sure you get elves. No, you don't get elves. I think you do. No, you don't. I think you do. No, no. Because there's a difference between like Santa Claus elf and like yeah. Legolas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a difference between different types of elf, but they're all no, elf you're right. and elves. He refers to himself. We elves got all sorts of powers. Yeah, see? All right. You know, look, let it never be said that when Liam's wrong, he'll admit to it. Let it let let it never be said that when Liam's wrong he'll admit to it. Um, <laughs> let it be said. That one past me, Liam. You son let of a bitch. It, let it be said that when Liam's yeah. wrong he'll admit to it. But yeah, you meet. Is it Puck? Puck. Yeah. Yeah. You meet Puck as well. Yeah. yeah. And you sort of get a little glimpse at what Guts is doing. Yeah. Like not explained particularly well. Yeah. But you can see that that's his goal. Which appears to be he... So, from what I understand, he's a god... Is he a god hand? Or something? He's got a name for what he is. What, Guts? Yeah. Um, I don't At know. At one point, they see the brand and they're like, oh... Yeah, 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 but he, he is human still. Yeah, no, no, he's human. So, he's yes. he's currently seems to be tracking down these, like, demon lords. Yes. Who he's trying to murder. Yes. And he murders them quite well. I with a to say. massive fuck off sword that is like ridiculously big. Yeah, the the description that they give twice, weirdly, once in vol- in book story one and once in story three. I thought yeah. it was meant to be like a callback and like yeah. hinting at something, but it wasn't. It was just they were using the exact same description. Yeah, which is it's uh, his sword was like his sword was less a sword and more a chunk of iron. Yes, 
Because this sword is like the size of him and it's literally just basically a slab with sharpened edges. Yeah. But, yeah, so he's got this giant sword. He's got a metal arm. Of course. Which can rotate and be different things. Yeah. We've seen it be a cannon, a crossbow and an arm. Yeah. I believe. And he's he's tr- so he's tracking down these demon lords. He's got a brand on his neck that bleeds when he starts to get annoyed. Yeah. Or when he meets demons. One of the two. Well, normally meeting demons annoys him. Yes. I think most things seem to annoy him. Yeah. He's he's quite an interesting, like... So one of the things I think is quite interesting is we, you've got him as the main character, but he's kind of hard to, like, not root for, but to, like, get into that kind of, like, his headspace. So I feel like what they do yeah. quite well is have Puck there as a more, like, an easier character for the audience to attach I to. I think him. Puck's definitely the, like, audience surrogate. Yes. Where, exactly. Because cause there's bits where, like, Puck's like, oh... You saved me because, you know, you are a good person on the inside. Yeah. And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You've misunderstood completely. You and just like, happened oh. to be saved. <laughs> yeah. It was not yeah. deliberate. It was a complete accident. And then he's like, I would have quite happily crushed you. And you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. But then he's sort of, but then like, so that's like the volume one, all that introduction stuff. He kills a demon lord. And then, because then in volume two, it sort of felt to me, and I don't know if you agree or if it's just that I'm soppy and sentimental. Okay. But I sort of felt like they were hinting that he does have a good core. Um, I think that... Because there's a bit where he cries think... or is upset or seems upset and then it felt to me that he was hiding the fact that he was upset by like laughing yeah. and being like, oh, I told him to go. I, I feel like it's... Um, yeah, the second story in this definitely feels like it's laying down the, the foundation for the more overarching kind of emotional element of the of the whole story, which would be, I would, I'm going to assume is this unlikely friendship between Guts yeah. and Puck. But That's I'd say I'm even sure. at the end of this first book, they're still not friends. Oh, no, no. No, not at all. But I am definitely hoping that that is the kind of... the, the larger picture that they're working towards. Yeah, yeah. That does feel like what they're doing. I also... Yeah. I think book two is really good for... Because book, book one's gory. You've yeah. got people being cut in half. Yeah. But book two was, like, the more fucked up of the three. Because it's got... You know, there's and basically he ends up sort of hitching a ride with uh, a girl and her father. Yes, they end up going into a. He's like, if he's he says he doesn't want to go with them because he he draws evil. Yeah, and they're like, no, don't be silly, come with us. I'm a priest. I don't believe in evil. And then he's like, well, you believe in good, so you should believe in evil. That's sort of how it works, which is a fair point. Yeah, and then so that whole bit, you're like, oh, okay, I get this. And then he sort of he's like, oh, you know, skeletons rise because of course they do. Yeah. Bunch of skeleton guys with spears, uh, and immediately just kill the daughter after yeah. she's had like an emotional sort of bit with guts. Where they she not gives him sort a of possess her as well. Yeah, they stab her through the stomach. She yeah. then dies. Yeah. Then he fights a lot of the skeletons, being all annoyed because yeah. he's a berserker. That's why it's called berserk. He goes yeah. berserk. Yeah. And uh, then suddenly Puck's just like, oh no! And you, he turns around and she's holding her dead dad's her dad's head. Yeah. And has been possessed by something. Yes. And that was I was like. Oh, it's that kind of story. I'm okay with this. Yeah. He, and also, the one thing we have forgot to mention is um, Berserk is blind in one eye, it seems. What? Where was that bit? You Like, one of his eyes is always shut. You never see him with both eyes open. Oh, yeah. always shut. You know what? I didn't notice that. Did you not? No. Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming he's blind in it, right? Yeah, I'd assume so. I, and that's probably, you know, he's probably been tortured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's got to be some backstory there, right? Because, yeah, we get some weird stuff where there's, like, these... Uh, incubuses or succubuses yes one or the other which are like instead of being the traditional sexy lady that's also a demon lady mm-hmm. they are just horrifying little tentacle monsters that steal your nightmares and live off your fear yeah and his ones are all seem to be like set in this weird dungeony place yes so i'm assuming that he's been tortured by the demon lords that would make sense i mean i'm hoping at some point we find out like what happened to his arm for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because that's what I'm assuming. I'm assuming all this bad stuff, like, so the being blind in one eye. Yeah. The brand, even. scars. Yeah. Well, the brand seems to be that it's some sort of mystical thing. Yeah, yeah. But I'd still like to find out, you know... Oh, yeah. I want to know what it is. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, the thing that annoyed me about the third story... Yeah. The last story in this book... The Guardians of Desire, Chapter 1, it was titled. Mm-hmm. That's... Because I was enjoying it, right? I was... I, I, Overall, I definitely say I did enjoy this book. But why end it? Like, I get why they've done it, but the fact that they ended it on a chapter one, and not only that, like, so clearly in volume two, this is going to continue, it ends on a cliffhanger as well. And it just was like, you had me already. You didn't need to... 
like tantalise me even more. Oh, I mean, yeah, I get that. I agree. Like, it, anno- it annoyed me in the sense that I was like, I said to you, oh, I really want to read the next one. Yeah, like when but I say I'm annoyed, I'm I was going like, to. you know, pissed off by it. I was just yeah, like, yeah, good. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, I, like, I didn't mind the cliffhanger. Like, it's not yeah. the worst thing I've seen something do to get me to read the next one. Yeah, it just felt unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, if, I get it, that. Yeah, it is a very sudden ending, and you're like, oh, yeah. It felt like they lacked confidence um, in their own in, in in how good it is to keep people coming back. Yeah, which is a shame because it is it is you know, as as we know, I think our listeners who have, have regular listeners would probably look at something like this and think, oh, Liam's not going to like that. But I actually did really enjoy it. Yeah, I think if you, if if you you're because you're going to carry on reading it, I'm going to carry on reading it. Yeah. I think if we both read a bit more and think we like it, I think at some point in the future we should try the anime, which I haven't seen and you oh, haven't seen. Fuck. No, because it's based on this, so it'll be decent. Well, we can only hope. We can only hope. No, but... it should be. So the way anime usually works is, like, with this sort of thing, is they do end up with filler stuff, and filler stuff is usually shit. Yeah. But you usually get that either because they're catching up to where the manga currently is, and they're like, oh, we need to buy some time. Yeah. Or, like, they just randomly decide it, but you usually would get, you know... Because it's only three stories here, you'd get past this in the anime. Fine, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, also, this has been going for ages. There's like 30-odd books. Yeah, but I don't know when the anime came out and whether they no. had to do the, like, oh, That's we're true. catching up. So something else that really bothered me about this, though, and it's not mm-hmm. the book's fault at all, but I then obviously went to buy Volume 2 on Amazon, and it was only available used and new. And when I first looked, it was like 70 quid. Over the next week, it has come down to, like, 40, which is still a fucking ludicrous amount for what is essentially quite a small book. Yeah, it's because you said you've seen Volume 3 and 4. Yeah, both both available for, like, 10 quid, which is... Yeah, I'm I wonder why Volume 2 is so difficult to get hold of. I don't know, but what's really annoying is I think Volume 5 as well was also ludicrous money. Oh, God. So I managed to nab a used uh, copy of Volume 2 on eBay. It was still more than I'm, you know, pleased that I had to pay. It was, like, 25 quid. Yeah. But obviously that's not like 40 or 70, so I reluctantly did it. But um, I think it was book five on Amazon, used and new, was going for like 400 quid. Yeah, that's insane. That is insane. So I'm hoping I'll be able to find that as well at some point. But uh, I don't understand why it was so expensive, Jack. Yeah, no, that is weird. Uh, it'd be interesting. We should look into it and see if, because it might be, you know, I wonder, it sound, It almost sounds like it's, I don't know, the thing that I, my head is jumping to is like maybe that got banned or something or it's out of print and they just haven't bothered to print more for but then why reason. would they have done like six and four i honestly don't know because that's what i mean like that almost that's why i'm thinking more like maybe it got banned or something possibly Cause the fact that it's in the middle of it yeah i don't know i, I don't know but um we'll see maybe, maybe there's just something really fucked up in it and everyone wants to read it <laughs> um i had some issues like so this is the second Go time on. i've ever read a manga yep uh previous i read death note which i really enjoyed so for those that aren't aware, it is sort of almost like back to front in that you read from right to left and you start at the back of the book and work your way towards the front. Yeah. Um, it took me uh, uh, probably the, the, by the first story to kind of really wrap my head around it. it. This was a little bit harder than Death Note was, I'd say. Um, and that's probably just like production values. Like the way Death Note was done, it had arrows at the top of each page just to kind of keep you reminded of where you're meant to be going. Yeah, but that's, th- you can't use that against this. No, I'm just saying it's production. Um, I don't know uh, if it is production. That's retarded. That's like us making Japanese books and going, I wish you put an arrow in it. Like, you know it's backwards. Yeah, yeah, no. no. What I'm you saying should is, have been able... Well, you don't need arrows. It here. might not have even been... Like, the arrows might not what helped. I just feel like with Death Note, your eye was drawn better than here. At times, I would look into what I thought the next panel would be because my eye was naturally drawn there. But actually, the panel, instead of being like next to it, would be below it. Well, that makes sense. What you're saying does make sense. But yeah. it's also because it was, you know, it, because it's translated. Yes. It's also not a, you know, it's not, it's not something they could have done something about. Yeah, and this I is what I think is quite interesting as well when it comes to um, something like graphic novels, comics, etc., where it's such a visual medium. And, uh, you know, the way, like, a comic book tends to work is they do try to naturally draw your eye it, to, to the, the next part of the story. Yeah. And I do think when it's translated they possibly do lose something there. Well, no, it's not It's not when it's translated that your eye's not being drawn properly. It's because Japanese people's eyes, people that read from right to left... Yeah, no, but not even that, would right? n- no, 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 seriously, seriously. They they would be drawn to the correct bits. Yes, but not even that. But like, what I'm saying is, like, even um, when you have speech bubbles, okay, with the translation, surely the speech bubbles will change their size. So that would also affect just the natural flow of things that maybe the artist didn't originally intend. 
I mean, I think they try to keep the speech bubbles the same size when they can. Like, I don't think it's a huge. Possibly. I don't well, know. I've... I think you're. I think you're reading more into it than you need to. I think the actual reason that your eyes are drawn to different places are that you naturally go the opposite way to what this book is doing. Possibly. One of the other honestly, I think that, if they mirrored uh... all of the images, you would go to the right panels. Maybe one of the other often. things that bothered me. Um, well, maybe bothers me is too strong, but I would have liked to have changed. Is um, at times there's like there's a lot of Japanese characters used. Uh, when I say characters, I mean like literally like the written character. It's how yeah, it's how they do sounds in Japanese. Yes. like how we do things like you know in the old comics. Exactly. I would have liked that to have been translated because I feel like there's there was definitely a couple of moments where I think it would have been useful to know what that sound was. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I think a lot of the time you can figure you out what it is, guess. but it's more yeah. effort than just them. Than if you, yeah, than if you could read it. Yes, yeah. exactly. So I would have liked that. Um, and again, it, like I don't know if it's because it's you know it's kind of certain graphic novels and comics are printed on quite nice glossy paper. This book is just your general sort of book paper. Yeah, most mangas from what I've seen, yeah, are it, printed on this type of paper. Yeah, exactly. And um, like the the artwork is very good, but there's there's definitely times where it gets a little bit. It's not often, but every now and again there'll get times where it's a little bit confusing what's going on. And yeah. I'd say the drawings, they kind of feel like they need, if, if they want maybe like glossier paper or something, or just a little bit bigger perhaps, there's there's a couple of times where you just want things to be a bit clearer. I think part of the issue with that, mm. not with what you're saying, but like to, yeah, for your point, yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say then. Basically, like stuff from that time period, cause is it 90s or is it late 80s? Ooh, it's one of the question. two. I'm not sure. I think I th- I'm going to say 90s. It looks like sort of 90s anime style. Yeah. Okay. I think there was a period of time where, like, the way Japan was drawing their anime and manga stuff had this like hyper detailed thing going on. Yeah, it's and it can like because some of the old animes are like that, where you you look at the drawings and you're like, it's really well done. Yeah. But it's not as good at sort of differentiating where the detail is almost. Yeah. Like nowadays, you get very beautifully done backgrounds, but they tend to be sort of almost watercolory in the way they look. So when you then draw this really hard lined character over the top, it pops better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this old style sort of has everything is that sort of hard. Yeah, so lines it tends and... to bleed into each other a little. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I not, think you're... that's I think that's a style difference that's just yeah. changed over time. Yeah, definitely. And I think as well, like sometimes you're not too sure what your eye should be focusing on in that panel. Yes, because everything's so yeah. detailed. Um, so I'm interested, it is copyrighted as 1989. Oh, okay, so yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I guess, I, I might just be completely assuming this here, but it, it, I get the feeling that these sort of things are made to be quite cheap. Like, they're, they're, there's not a lot of money put into the actual making of it. Like, I mean that in a more physical way, like the paper and the, the ink. Yeah, I, d- I, don't, I don't really, I think, it, I think they're more, <sighs> I'm saying this based on zero knowledge. Yeah, same. Which is what we sort of do. Yeah, of course. But it's always felt to me that manga is more popular in Japan, especially in this time period, than comic books were over here. Although I guess when you look at a comic book by itself, a lot of times comic books back in those days weren't printed on nice paper either. No, it's like, like, so maybe like, there wasn't just money in the industry. Yeah, like, like, look at stuff like the Beano and the Dandy and that kind of. Yeah, thing. but I don't. Those aren't comic. They're book comics. Comic books. They're comics, but they're not like I'm talking about superhero comics. Okay, are like Golden Age. Marvel so, because when you uh, said DC. over here, I thought you meant like British comics. I meant Western. I meant the Western world. Okay, got you. Yeah, I was. I was being very broad. <laughs> yeah, in my that's... geographical locating there. Fair enough. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely. I'd say for, for people that are curious about mangas, I think Death Note is probably a better place to start. I think it's a bit more accessible, but that this was still very good. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how we feel when we read more. Yeah, definitely. I, I do feel like there's not enough. Here, like, there's a lot, but I still feel like there's a lot that I want to know. Yeah, I'm hoping that it becomes. Yeah, I I just hope the story gets not better because I liked the story, Mm. the idea that's there. I like what I like the potential in the story. Yeah, and I hope it lives up to that potential. Yeah, there's a lot for it to build on. But then the fact that we've heard good things about this before would imply to me that maybe that it does. Well, okay, so the thing I'm hoping for with Death Note, they definitely hit a period where it felt like they were just treading water and they were just churning it out and just like elongating things unnecessarily. See, I, I don't rem- I don't think I read the whole manga for Death Note. Did it? Because the anime, I know, yeah. got when... Uh, we can spoil Death Note, can't we? Uh, yeah. Well, it's if old. we warn people that we're going to, All yeah, right. sure. I'm going to talk about stuff that happens in Death Note now. Okay. Because so if you want to read Death Note, 
and you yeah. don't want it spoiled. And it is really good. If you haven't read it, I would recommend you. Oh it. yeah, no, one hundred percent. You guys should go and read or watch that anime. Yeah, I've heard the film's good, but I've never seen it, so I won't vouch for it. Okay. Uh, but so like in that when it's is when it goes a bit stale. Yeah. Either when L dies. Yeah. And you get nice. Is that his name? Yeah, something like that. Something weird. Yeah. Or is it the bit where Light becomes a good guy for a while? Both, to be honest. Yeah. Like, it was a while back that I read it, so I'm not 100% clear. Yeah, because the, was... the, the first arc of that story is really interesting. fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's then there's basically... a bit where Light goes good, and you're like, it's still interesting, because Elle's still trying to figure out if it is him. Yeah. It's, and never it's... quite believes it, and you're like, oh, that's cool. But then the bit where Elle dies, and you just get yeah. a whole new guy, that felt so weird. Yeah, yeah. That, that was definitely a weak point in the story. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm hoping. Obviously, there's like I think at the, in the back of this book, there's it says there's 37 volumes. Yeah, uh, it might still be ongoing. For all I know, there could be more. I don't know. Um, but that is a, a lot, lot of potential for them to be, you know, treading water. I'm hoping they don't. Yeah, I'm sure they won't. I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah, I think this is what actually sold me on it. Right, there's a little blurb in the like what we would call the front of the book, but for them, yeah, the yeah, back, yeah. I guess. Um, it says not for the squeamish or the easily offended Berserk asks for no quarter and offers none which I think is quite a nice little um, tagline for it yeah yeah so if that's got you interested give it a go why not what you got to lose there is one more thing that I'd like to point out yeah which fits in with that that whole uh, sort of warning that they give yeah and that is the literally the first thing you see in this book yeah Um, as soon as I saw it I was like oh god of course Liam suggested this to me yeah, the the first it's the only bit of this volume that's in color. Oh, and I, ha- is... I don't have color. Oh, do you not have color on yours? No, mine's black and white. Oh, does yours? I assume it starts with the same scene, which is guts, sex, having sex with a lady. Yeah, and then she turns into a monster. Yeah, whilst he's fucking her. Yeah, and then he kills her. <laughs> yes, and it seems like that was all his plan. <laughs> and you're yes. like, I was like, oh, good. Yep, this is a very Liam <laughs> thing to suggest. But that's the only bit. I know, I know. That was literally, I read that bit and I was like, I hope this isn't all like this. <laughs> I mean, I was a little bit disappointed that it wasn't. <laughs> you would be. be. Honest. Yeah. Um, what would you give it out of five? I think for this first volume, three? Yeah, but... okay, I, I'd say, I'd say 3.5. Oh, okay. I, just, I think it's going to get better, but I think just for this volume, yeah, it wasn't you know the best that I've I, seen. I just found myself really enjoying it and like it, it kind of gripped me in that stage where I was like wanting to read more like, oh yeah 100% got me to the time. I want to read more yeah so Cause, like yeah because you'd, you'd messaged me and said you were annoyed by the ending yes and then when I finished it I messaged you and said is it because the ending's a cliffhanger and you want to read the next volume and you were like yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I was exactly. like yep same <laughs> now I'm just sat here impatiently waiting for my eBay order to arrive whereas so I, I am on. going to read the second volume after we finish recording yeah um, just to piss you off but I do need to recommend to you another comic okay Monstrous. I keep messaging you about it, and you're like, yeah, yeah. I'll read it. You need to read it. Man. I haven't been to Forbidden Planet. You need to fix that. Okay. Also, can I talk about my naughty comic? Fine. All right, so I got a new naughty comic from my local comic book shop recently. It is called Jungle Fantasy Vixens, okay? It's so good, Jack. I don't believe Jack, you. Jack, shut your little face. It's so good. Right. Why? What happens in it, Liam? So there's a bit of a running joke in my local comic book shop where... I've I've obviously said to them, oh, I want these comics, and they're like, what? Well, you know, it's just, it's just it's just tits and bits, right? No, no, no. I like them for the story, and like, oh, if that's what you want to call it, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, this cover has a lot of story on it, and it'll show me a cover with a woman with her tits out or something. Yeah. And genuinely, it is the story that I like. And jungle yeah, that's fantasy weird. Yeah. vixens. The, the thing is, if it's got a good story and it has added nudity fucking happy as Larry all the boxes are ticked that's that's all I want out of life a good story and some nudity <laughs> Jesus Christ so Jungle Fantasy Vixens right yep are you ready for the amount of story in this comic go on so the cover in case anyone hasn't seen it is, is generally in the Jungle Fantasy series you'll have like a couple of women on the cover with dinosaurs and that's all I needed to see to, to sell me that's yep. I was like a tra- like you know naked women with dinosaurs sign me up wasn't ready for the amount of story there is. So it starts, they're in space, Jack. Okay. On a spaceship, going through a meteor shower. And they they were observing this, like, green and blue planet. 
So naturally, this meteor shower comes. They run to the um, escape pods. One of them recently had a shower or something, so she doesn't have a lot of time to get clothes. It's realistic like that. Like, if you was in the middle of a meteor shower, you wouldn't have time to grab clothes, would you? I It'd would be... put on clothes, yeah. It's the I've last... explained this to you before, I'd put no. on clothes. No, 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 right? No, I would. No, you shouldn't. Like, you're, you're, I would. If you're showering and your house is burning down, it's like, right, do I escape naked or do I I'd burn? I'd grab some clothes and run out and then put them on when you I was You don't there. have time to pick up some boxer shorts. What if the fire starts in your bedroom? Well, then, yes, then I would run out naked. There we go. So, they run into the escape pod. They land on this planet, right? So, on the planet, you've got dinosaurs. You've got uh, the natives, who are a little bit hostile. But not only that, it turns out that the spaceship they were on was ferrying criminals, who also managed to escape. And now you've got criminals on this planet as well. It's so good. And you've got these two women, and they don't have many clothes. And it's brilliant, Jack. It's so good. That didn't sound like a lot of story. It was more than I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, the next time you visit, you're reading it. I will, yeah. Yeah, and I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll be like, oh my god, this is brilliant. We didn't tell everyone that I read the other sexy comic that you bought. No, we didn't, so go ahead. It wasn't that good. You, re- well, you enjoyed the bit of it that I didn't enjoy, actually. Which bit did I enjoy? The stuff, the crossover stuff with the demon and that. Yeah, I preferred that more to the other bit because that had more story in it. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what I was saying with the, was my issue. was Because um, it's an issue zero. Too much story, you just wanted boobs. It was an issue zero, and it was like a little, a little, little like, morsel of what the story could be in a proper issue. and it, it, But it was enough to get me curious. Okay. But anyway, I don't want to talk about your sexy comics anymore. Why not? Because I want to talk about, Liam, what we're doing on the next episode of Nerd on Nerd. Go on, then. Do you want to say what we're doing? <laughs> no, because you said you wanted to talk about it. So All right, fine. You. On the next episode of Nerd on Nerd, yep. me and Liam have... By chance, yeah, both ha- have discovered that by we are playing... you being belligerent, partly because I'm being belligerent, yeah, we have discovered that we are both currently, yeah, have gone back to The Witcher Three. Yes, so we've decided, seeing as we're both doing it, yep, and we've both got very different opinions on it. And let's be honest, the least effort we can put into this, the better. So if we're already well, I mean, doing something, we're putting anyway. an effort because I'm dedicating a lot of hours to this goddamn game. I need to dedicate more. Yeah, you do. But yeah, so we're, no, we're going to talk about The Witcher 3. The thing is, right, here's what here's what people need to know. I started playing it probably about a year ago, stopped, and then I started from the beginning, whereas you jumped back into where you left off. Yeah, but I wasn't very far into the game. Uh, I feel like you'd probably completed the main, like, the big, long first quest, I think you said. We, yeah, I got to... Well, we can talk about it next time. Exactly. Next time. But um, yeah, I, so I, I yeah. hadn't played a lot, though. Well, I had quite a lot of hours on it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm still... I've, I'm probably playing catch-up a little bit, but I've still got opinions. Obviously. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, but yeah, so we're going to talk about The Witcher 3, not the DLCs, because we're playing through the main game. Yeah. If you want to, you know, play along at home, or if you've completed The Witcher 3, or if you've got thoughts about it, tweet them to us. How can they do that? At Nerd on Nerd. You could also email us. Wait a second, Jack. I have a tweet that's too long. What do I do? You could email us. <laughs> okay. How do I do that? You can email us at nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Jack, what if I wanted to see your faces? Well, if you wanted to see our faces, you could yeah. go to our YouTube channel and watch the video that has our faces in it. Oh, uh, I'm on YouTube, but I, I've, I can't find you. I've typed in Nerd on Nerd and it's bringing up all shit. Oh, type in Nerd on Nerd, episode one. It's called a flashlight. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, Liam. <laughs> oh, also, you know, rate us on iTunes, all the usual, please. I'm begging. Thank you. Bye. Bye.